Good morning friends. Today we are going to start with the chapter Lost Spring. I would like to share this video which was broadcasted on ITV news related to child labor. The small practiced hands of a six-year-old. Shamil is breaking rocks at an Indian mine so that the Western world can sparkle. He and his fellow workers are mining mica. Among other things, this crystalline rock is used to make pearlescent paint for luxury cars. It is also what gives cosmetics the shimmer that's so in vogue these days. The largest mica deposits in the world are here in the Kaderma district of Jharkhand province. And yet, according to the locals, all the mining in this area is illegal. Yes, this was a video related to child labor where mica is being extracted from the mines and we can see this is related to the lost spring thematic content. So this is a video lesson by Sukhinder Kaur, PGT, KV number 2, Agra, Kent. Lost spring, stories of stolen childhood by Anis Jung. This is about the author. Anis Jung was born in Raurkela. She spent her childhood and adolescence in Hyderabad, received education in Hyderabad and the US. Parents were writers and she began her career as a writer in India. These are her works. She is editor of Youth Times and columnist for major newspapers in India and abroad. Now this is about the lesson. This lesson is an excerpt from her book titled Law Spring, Stories of Ch Stolen Childhood. She analyzes grinding poverty and traditions which condemn the poor children to a life of exploitation. The theme of the uh, story is the plight of street children forced into labor early in life and denied opportunity of going to school. Sub theme is the callousness of society and the political class to the sufferings of the poor. We can see different posters, the plight of street children who are forced into labor early in life, they hardly get a chance to go to school. Society also does not extend their support so that they can live a healthy life, a meaningful life. So World Day Against Child Labor is celebrated on June 12th. Lot has been done, but still lot is to be done. So these are some posters related to child labor where it says stop child labor, start education. No child should ever be for sale. This is again posters related to child labor. The children are seeking help, please help and then the alarmingly growing rate of poverty and poverty is a weapon of mass destruction. Another poster, a small child with two aspects, see one is going for labor and the other one is going to school for acquiring education. Now, 
the first part of the story the chapter lost spring deals with life of the boy sahib e alam and this is the statement sometimes i find a rupee in the garbage so the central character is the boy sahib e alam it means the lord of universe he lives in seema puri on the outskirts of delhi he is a refugee from bangladesh he does rag picking for survival he lives in miserable unhygienic conditions bangladesh refugees have been living in seema puri since 1971 without permits but with only ration cards this child wants to go to school but rag picking has become acquired fine art skill sometimes it brings them coins sometimes a 10 rupee note and even some valuable surprises his name means lord of the universe and ironically he roams around picking garbage and does not even have chappals to wear now these are the flood hit areas of bangladesh people migrate to other safer areas so we find bangladesh refugees living on the out- outskirts of delhi in a slum area called seema puri it's a place on the periphery of delhi yet miles away from it they live in structures of mud with the roofs of tin and tarpaulin devoid of sewage drainage or running water they do not have a permit as i told you they have a ration card for these children working as rag pickers survival is more important therefore food is the first most important priority in their life now children they also become partners in survival whatever they get they give to their parents and later on it is sold for earning money to buy food this is a slum area of seema puri we can see and garbage to them is gold sometimes they find a rupee or even a 10 rupees note in the garbage it gives them hope to keep scrounging on we can see in this pic children scrounging for something valuable some valuable uh, things like gold like money like coins here coexistence with the animals we can see small kids scrounging for uh, some kind of treasure so that they can sell it and buy some food for them and here we find a cow standing um, uh, along with them and this shows that the children are used to coexisting with animals this is a pitiable picture which shows children together taking bags on their very delicate shoulders now saheb is no long, longer his own master on her next encounter anish jung comes across saheb as an employee in a tea stall doing hard work he has started working for rupees 800 and all his meals but he is no longer his own master now this pic is showing saheb working in a tea stall planning to sell tea now along with the thematic content of the first part part a these are some of the literary devices saheb e alam which means lord of the universe is directly in contrast to what saheb is in reality and it's a irony seema puri a place on the periphery of delhi 
yet miles away from it. Metaphorically, it is a metaphor. For the children, it is wrapped in wonder. For the elders, it is a means of survival. This is antithesis. Scrounging for gold is a metaphor. Again, we have these literary devices. We can, uh, I hope all of you have gone through it. Now, rag picking a fine art. The means of survival of migrants of Bangladesh in Simapuri is rag picking. Garbage to them is gold. Like a fine art that has no end in appealing the sense of beauty. The rag pickers scrounging the garbage is a never ending process which provides them their daily bread day after day. Now garbage has a different meaning for adults and children. For adults it, it is a means of survival. But children have a lot of fun and excitement because whenever they find something uh, which is of value in the garbage, they feel very happy and this is a child's curiosity and happiness for small pretenses. For small reasons, they get excited and they feel very happy. They actually don't realize the harsh realities of life and what they are losing and what they have lost. There was always a hope of coming across unexpected surprises and so garbage was wrapped in wonders for them. Garbage to them is gold because it provides them items which can be sold for cash, which can buy them food and is the means of survival. For these rag pickers, it is the best thing and the best moment of their life when they get gold or anything of value in the garbage. Now, reasons for children not wearing footwear. As Anish Jung came across the children who were picking up rag, these rag pickers Almost all were not wearing chapels. One explanation of this habit of remaining barefoot is that it is a tradition among poor children. However, the author quickly mentions that calling it a tradition could be just a means of justification of the utter destitution. Now, Seemapuri is a place on the periphery of Delhi yet it is miles away from it. Although it is uh, very close to Delhi, but acute poverty and unhygienic conditions make it uh, miles away from Delhi. As we already know that uh, these uh, refugees, they had come from Bangladesh and uh, they like the place since they could survive here and they have food and shelter here. Irony in Sahib's name has already been discussed. Sahib's name means Lord of the Universe but he is poverty stricken barefoot and homeless. He scrounges through garbage dumps of Delhi for bread. Now we come to the second part that is part B which talks about Mukesh living in Firozabad, employed in the family business of making bangles, but is dreaming of driving a car. So the title of this part is I want to drive a car. Now this is uh, about the bangle makers in Firozabad. All of us uh, must have heard about it. And bangles Beautiful bangles are associated to these factories in Firozabad. So we can see the pics, small children working 
And now we will talk about Mukesh. He is a child laborer in a glass factory in Firozabad. Wishes to be a motor mechanic. Wants to learn to drive a car. Family is unaware that child labor is illegal. Working conditions in glass furnaces. High temperature is there. Dingy cells are there. And they are poorly ventilated. Children lose eyesight at an early age. Now you can see the pics. And you can understand that these furnaces which are burning, they create high temperature and there is no ventilation which is seen here and dingy cells are there. Now this is uh, the theory of uh, these people. They feel that it is their karma and God has put them in this uh, profession of making bangles. Now generations are involved in bangle making. Mansi 12 is working on beautification of a set of bangles. Children are engaged into the trade by their families at an early age. Generations involved in bangle making. Babu Ram Mishank 80 has been working in the bangle industry his entire life and according to him the things have remained the same with no change in the working conditions. Generations involved in bangle making. We can find here Gurdi Devi, 52, and her children working together to earn their livelihood so that they can support the entire family and no child has gone to school. Now this is the name of the site where uh, we can find more of these uh, um, um, these happenings in which we can see the videos of child labor indulged in different ways and in different places. Now living conditions in Firozabad, when we talk about Bengal factories, we need to know about the living conditions in Firozabad, how the people are living, the people who are earning just enough to feed their stomach. Such people, they live in houses with crumbling walls. Humans and animals both live together and we find stinking lanes. And Mukesh's elder brother's wife is in charge of the family members according to custom covers her face with wheel. Mukesh's father, he is head of the family, poverty stricken, unable to renovate house or provide education to sons. Only legacy he hands over is the art of bangal making. You can see the condition of these houses. They are all covered with sheets so that uh, they can protect themselves from the rain. Now stinking lanes, drainage is seen flowing, open uh, drainage is flowing which is again unhygienic conditions of survival. The narrow streets in which the humans and animals both live together and survive. Now the view of Mukesh's grandfathers is that their present state is result of karma. Accepted her husband's blindness caused by dust of glass bangles as their destiny. Thinks art of bangle making is God given lineage. Now this is vicious circle of poverty. We uh, all know that uh, the people who are engaged in bangle making they don't get a lot of money the middlemen are the one who survive the sahukars the policemen the politicians all these people they trap these innocent bangle makers and most of the profit is earned by these middlemen and poverty and illiteracy is the cause of their becoming victims to such people. There is a fear of police and there is lack of leadership. Now what is the irony? 
Bangle is a symbol of uh, Suhag. Every girl child one day as bride will wear bangles. Become old with bangles in wrist. No sight in eyes. The beauty of the bangles cannot be seen as they lose sight. Now children are double victims. First by birth, bordered by stigma of caste. Then there is no hope for them. They have to accept family occupation. And further when they grow up, they are ruled by sahukas, middlemen and police. Little desire to dream snubbed in childhood. Mukesh is an exception. He dreams to be motor mechanic. He is practical. He does not dream to fly aeroplanes because he hardly can see uh, aeroplanes flying over Firozabad. Mukesh dream to become a motor mechanic is like a mirage which exists but is not possible as there are little or no chances of its accomplishment. Few aeroplanes fly over Firozabad. Conditions in which the bangle makers work or poor, they cannot think or dream big. Aeroplanes signify distant, far-fetched dream. People of Firozabad were not exposed to such grand dreams. Now there are some people and some forces which conspire to keep the workers of Firozabad in poverty. Lack of awareness, stigma of belonging to a caste of bangle makers, vicious circle of sahukars, middlemen and money lenders, the fear of being beaten and dragged to jail by the policemen. Now these are literary devices. She still has bangles on her wrist but not light in her eyes. Antithesis. As your hands move mechanically like the terms of a mechanic a machine, I wonder if she knows the sanctity of the bangles she helps make. This is a comparison, a simile. Few aeroplanes fly over Firozabad. This is irony. Now if we talk about the title. The title Lost Spring has a tinge of irony. Spring is the best season of a child, of a year, sorry, and it is full of color, fragrance, and freshness, a season of renewal and growth. The childhood of humans likened to spring marks the beginning of human life, has a tremendous scope for growth, full of joy, pleasure, and play. Ironically, millions of children like Sahib and Mukesh experience no spring in their lives. For their childhood is consumed in making a living. They are just hand to mouth. Education, play and pleasure, they are not for them. They must work to support themselves and their families. Title brings out the depravity of child labor in a very telling way. So this is about title justification. And uh, we end with the PPT presentation. We have realized that the plight of street children, it is really pitiable. These children who need to go to schools, who need to enjoy their uh, spring season, that is their childhood, they are forced to indulge in labor just to earn few rupees for survival. So, we need to understand the call of the time and it is high time that the society and the people in power, they understand their moral duty to save these children from exploitation and save the nation because these children are the future of a country. Thank you. Have a nice day.